government has released the regulations bringing the national standards into permitted development. This is a regulation that we've been waiting for for 10 months. In reality, it was promised way back at the beginning of last year. It was threatened by Theresa May in her sort of outgoing statements as Prime Minister. And oh boy, have we been waiting for it. I'm going to go through this regulation in detail, what it means for you as a property investor and what it means for permitted development. Join me in a few minutes. Roll the credits. Okay, so this is really, really, really interesting from my point of view. This is game changing. It's not often that I'm speechless, but I really am. And what this regulation does is insert the requirement to meet the national standards for all dwellings covered by permitted development. So all dwellings created by any permitted development right. I'm going to explain where I get those references from, why I'm making that judgment, and I'm going to do it by sharing my screen. So if you give me two seconds, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share my screen, show you the regulations, explain how they work, and more importantly, explain how they affect PD from April of next year. So this is the new regulation. Here it is, the Town of Country Planning General Committee Development England Amendment Regulations 2020, brought out yesterday, yesterday being the 12th day of the 13th. And this is what this does. Now, importantly, it is this part here, part two, that gives the regulation change that we need. And it is here that is really important. Amendment in relation to space standard. So what this says, and I'm going to read it to you, I'm showing it to you, no ambiguity, full transparency, full disclosure. I've read this already. I've already commented on it on, it on social media, especially after I saw some comments on social media suggesting otherwise. But this is what I read it as. In Article 3, after paragraph 9, insert 9A, Schedule 2, and I'll show you what Schedule 2 is, does not grant planning permission for or authorise any development of any new dwelling house where the gross internal floor area is less than 37 square metres in size or that does not comply with the nationally described space standard issued by the Department for Communities and Local Government on the 27th of March. So they brought in both sides of the standard. They've given an absolute bottom to stop any argument whatsoever that the dwelling you're proposing doesn't have a standard attributed to it. And we've known about that bottom for a while. That bottom is 37 square meters. It is the bottom end of dwelling, one person, one bedroom dwelling with a shower room been a lot of argument about whether that covers studios now the answer is given yes it bloody well does because it says you cannot do a permitted development dwelling any mode and i'll show you why i'm saying that that doesn't comply with 37 square meters in size and then the other part of the standard the other part of the technical standard deals with internal spaces so now the council can look at your bedroom sizes. They can look at your floor to see. They can look at the technical standard to ensure that what you are proposing to do complies with the technical standard as well as the space standard. Very, very interesting. Now, this is the bit that I know was misreferenced elsewhere. And I'm being really pointed here because I'm know the gurus are going to misreference this 
this bit schedule two does not grant permission for or authorize any development of any new dwelling house that bit is going to get misreferenced i'm going to show you why schedule two relates to schedule two of the general permitted development order let's look at that now so this is the general permitted development order right here it is the old one england 2015 we're now on the 2020 amendments but this is the original and let me just read you what these schedules are right schedule one deals with article two three land article two four land article two five land that's what schedule one deals with remember we're looking for schedule two here. Schedule two is the permitted development rights. So when the government says any new dwelling created by schedule two, they are referring to the permitted development rights. Now, I think, well, not I think, if it's worded that way, and it is, then this refers to, and I'm going to scroll down, down, down because the permitted development rights will catch everything but any pd right in part that provides for new dwellings and i think that can also include this one hmos to dwelling houses and vice versa going from an hmo to a dwelling i think it also catches l but it most definitely will catch g it will catch the reverse of part L, M, N, O, P doesn't exist anymore, definitely Q. There's been some suggestion about R. Now, R doesn't get you to a dwelling. It gets you to a flexible commercial use. I've done a video on the fallacy of class R. Have a look at that. Um, but it doesn't actually get you to dwelling. I don't think it gets you on R. But it certainly will get you on part 20 stuff as well if we're allowed to keep it because it is all encompassed inside of this thing schedule two and remembering of course that the allowance that the national standards are now attached to schedule two i think this is a game changer in our team we've been saying this is going to change the world of the guru forever because we're not going to see any guru after April getting permission for dwellings that are less than 37 square meters. I think this also puts pressure on the councils that haven't adopted that for planning to adopt it for planning as well. I think there's a fundamental shift that's going to happen. No more are we going to have the argument, well, my council hasn't adopted it for planning purposes. I don't think that's going to be relevant anymore. I think in reality it's going to be a case of what's the national standard that's what we're sticking to like comment subscribe please comment what do you think if you're using the permitted development rights and getting sub 37 square meter units at the moment what is this going to do for your business model and more important your development strategy going forward i think it's very interesting have a great day everyone i'll catch you on the next one see you soon